and he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could in no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight, and glorified God. Israelites, it is extremely important that you know who your oppressors are. Your failure to identify your oppressors is keeping you in bondage. When the wrong target is identified, the perpetrator will go undetected. While you are distracted with the wrong target, your oppressor continue to destroy you. Many people's reality is based on what they can see. The Most High said in the scriptures that we must live by faith and not by sight. But we walk by faith, not by sight. In addition to living by faith and not by sight, Yah said, what you perceive as reality, the seen things are temporary. However, what is unseen is eternal. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. The physical realm is temporary and the spiritual realm is eternal. The reason the physical realm is temporary, whatever is taking place in the spirit realm will change the outcome in the physical realm. If you are under demonic oppression in the spirit realm, it will manifest in the physical realm. Once you digest this knowledge and begin to engage in spiritual warfare, you will gain victory in the spirit realm. Your victory will transfer to the physical realm, changing your condition. This is why your situation is temporary in the physical realm. You should never make your temporary conditions, the seen things, permanent. Too many Israelites are accepting what the physical realm is revealing to them. Because many are driven by their outward conditions, they are making decisions that are detrimental to their destiny. Israelites, you can no longer make decisions based on the false narrative your physical condition is revealing. You must get to the root. If you love the Most High, then follow the Most High by making decisions that will benefit His people, His kingdom, and your life. The scriptures reveal to us that the Most High do not see as man sees. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. The Most High's ways are higher than our ways, and his thoughts are greater than our thoughts. It is important to the Most High that His people know who their oppressors are and how to identify their oppressors. If you can identify the right target, you will no longer be under demonic oppression. If you are suffering from a cold but you take medication for pain, will the pain medication cure the cold? You can take as many painkillers that you want, it will not treat the cold. When you take the right medicine to cure the cold, that is when you would be healed. Likewise, Israelites, if you attack the spirit of fear and the spirit of infirmity is the culprit, the spirit of fear will flee from you. However, the spirit of infirmity remains undetected and continue to oppress your life. You have to examine yourself, Israelites, to identify your oppressors. If the spirit of fear is oppressing you, attack the spirit of fear. If the spirit of infirmity is oppressing you, attack the spirit of infirmity. If both the spirit of fear and infirmity are oppressing your life, attack both spirits. It is very possible, Israelites, to be oppressed by multiple spirits at the same time. The Bible revealed to us the story of the man in the tombs that was possessed by legions of devils. Yahshua spoke to the unclean spirits, commanding the spirits to come out of the man. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. The reason the kingdom of darkness is a well-organized kingdom, unclean spirits do not discriminate against each other. 
They will work together to oppress a person. Unclean spirits will share a body. Did you notice in the story of the man in the tomb that Yeshua rebuked the unclean spirit controlling the man and not the man? Remember, you must get to the root. That is the only way you will be free from spiritual bondage of all sorts. Yeshua asked the unclean spirit to identify itself. The unclean spirit respond by calling himself legion. The unclean spirit revealed that there are many spirits oppressing the man. And he asked him, what is thy name? And he answered saying, my name is legion for we are many. Israelites, it is important that you understand that your oppressors are spirits. The unclean spirits manifest itself through an individual or group that is overpowered by the wicked spirits. There are multiple ways to be under demonic oppression. One way is by generational curses. Sorcery and witchcraft is another gateway unclean spirits use to oppress your life. When you forge a covenant with unclean spirits, by establishing a covenant, you give the unclean spirit legal rights to oppress you and to control your life. Another way unclean spirits oppress your life through other people that are possessed with an unclean spirit. For example, you did not forge a covenant with the spirit of hate. However, everywhere you go, people seem to hate you. The spirit of hate is projecting through the people that are under its control everywhere that you go to attack you. The purpose of the attack is to forge a covenant in addition to stop you from doing what the Most High asks you to do. Another example, Black people do not want to live in poverty, nor do Black people want to see their neighborhoods in distress. Collectively, Black people have money to better their communities. However, the spirit of division and discrimination operating in government leaders caused them to discriminate against the indigenous people by making it difficult to obtain loans and grants to build their communities. The spirit of discrimination is oppressing government leaders who are the rulers in the flesh through spiritual wickedness in high places. This is why the Most High say we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against the powers, against principalities, against rulers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I hope this is making sense to you, Israelites. I am praying the Holy Spirit is helping you discern how the kingdom of darkness is oppressing your life. Satan is oppressing your life by manifesting his will through people who are submitted to unclean devils. Many Israelites thought the Most High was going to name their oppressors by race, gender, and other classification. Remember, the Most High do not operate by the outward appearance. You have to get to the root of the problem to eliminate the problem. Destroying the surface is a temporary fix. Just as the scripture said to you, the seen things are temporary. The root cause to all your troubles are spiritual. The Most High wants you to focus on the root to identify your oppressors. In addition, the Most High wants you to go beyond the surface. The first oppressor the Most High revealed to you by name was the spirit of fear. Oppressor number two is the spirit of infirmity. Before you learn how the spirit of infirmity manifests its will in the physical realm, you have to know how the spirit of infirmity operate in the spiritual realm. What is the spirit of infirmity? The heathens define infirmity as a physical or mental weakness. The heathens are partially correct with their definition of infirmity. They left the significant part of informing you that infirmity is a spirit. In addition to the spirit of infirmity being weakness, it is also an illness. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. The spirit of infirmity is one of the high level spirits oppressing the Israelite community in this generation. The workers of iniquity love to use the spirit of infirmity to oppress their victims. Israelites, almost all dreams that involve the spirit of infirmity are coming from evil altars. A worker of iniquity sent that spirit to torment you. 
If the spirit of infirmity is seeking to forge a covenant with you, know that it is witchcraft related. As the scripture state, unclean spirits will bring other spirits more powerful than it to overtake a person. The spirit of infirmity will travel with all kinds of unclean spirits to seek a covenant. The spirit of infirmity often travel with the spirit of death, laziness, apathy, procrastination, delay, and many other unclean devils. The spirit of infirmity use multiple disguise in the hopes of establishing a covenant with you in the spirit realm. One of the most common ways the spirit of infirmity disguise itself is by food. Eating in the dream is never good unless it is a positive dream coming from the most high. For example, eating bread in the dream the scripture state man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of the Most High. And he humbled thee, and suffered thee to hunger, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Eating bread in the dream can mean provision and nourishing your spirit. Another example, when the Most High said to his prophet Ezekiel to eat the scroll, the scroll was filled with the words of the Most High. Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he caused me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat, and fill thy bowels with this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it. And it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, and speak with my words unto them. Positive dreams of you eating a scroll like Ezekiel, the Bible, or eating bread stems from the Most High. When you find yourself eating soul food and other junk food in the dream, that is not a positive dream. That is a negative dream coming from the kingdom of darkness. Eating in the dream is dangerous. You should never dismiss a dream of you eating or someone feeding you in the dream. Depending on what the dream is revealing, the moment you wake up from your sleep, you should make yourself vomit whatever you ate. In addition, declare a fast to cleanse your spirit from the food you ate in the spirit realm. It is that serious, Israelites. The Most High used symbols to speak to you in the dream, just as I illustrate to you about eating bread in the Bible. The bread was a symbol of provision and nourishment to your spirit. You do not need to eat a four-course meal and dessert in the spirit realm to sustain your spirit. Your spirit never sleep, nor do your spirit get tired. Only your body get tired. That is why you sleep to rest. When your body is resting, your spirit is in the spirit realm interacting with other spirits. You only need to eat in the physical realm because you have flesh. Eating food nourish your flesh only. There is no need for you to eat food in the spirit realm. Some things are made for the physical realm only and eating is one of them. You perceive that you are eating your favorite meal in the dream. However, your favorite meal could be the spirit of death the spirit of infirmity in the form of a heart attack and many other disease. Eating in the dream is a smoking mirror. You are actually eating the spell that was cast on you. Another way the spirit of infirmity disguises itself in the spirit realm, when you receive an injection. Someone inject you with a needle. What portion was in that needle that person inject you with? The two examples given are two common ways the spirit of infirmity show up to establish a covenant with you in the spirit realm. If you do not rebuke the dream, a covenant was forged. Whatever spell you ate will manifest in the physical realm. If your spirit is sick in the spirit realm, your spirit will be sick in the physical realm. Remember, your spirit is the real you. That is why it is important to seek deliverance right away when you find yourself eating in the dream. Alternatively, after any wicked dream that result in a covenant. If you see yourself vomiting the food right after you ate the food in the dream, that is a good sign. Your spirit is fighting back and the Most High has intervened in your situation. The covenant the unclean spirit hoped to establish was denied. Although you achieve victory in the dream, Always pray and break every wicked covenant made knowingly or unknowingly the moment you wake up. How does the spirit of infirmity manifest itself in the physical realm? When the Most High made his people in his image and likeness, 
His creation is to represent the most high and all his glory. The most high did not create his people to be lazy with no energy. In addition, plagued with all sorts of infirmities. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, but a wounded spirit who can bear? You are supposed to be vibrant and full of energy. The scripture revealed to us that Moses was 120 years old when he died and he never lost his strength. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. The spirit of infirmity focus on your weaknesses and plague your body to slow you down. The person deteriorates slowly, the result is death. That is why the spirit of death travel alongside the spirit of infirmity. Israelites, there is a reason the Most High informed his people of clean and unclean food. Not all flesh is edible. By the way, unclean spirits can possess animals as well. If you go back to the same story of the man in the tomb, the spirit legion asked Yeshua to cast him and the other unclean spirits into the pigs. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Pigs are unclean animals, and the Most High do not want his people to consume pork. Israelites love to eat all kinds of food. When someone plague a person with a deadly disease, their goal is to paralyze their victim and eventually for the disease to kill their victim by a slow death. Israelites are plagued with all kinds of disease. I know many Israelites who suffer from some sort of knee problems. That is the spirit of infirmity manifesting itself in the physical realm. Thyroids, heart attack, cancer, and many other illnesses that your body is plagued with are spirits. Obesity comes from the spirit of infirmity. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. Remember, the spirit of infirmity focuses on your weaknesses. If you cannot control the amount of food you eat, your overactive craving stems from the spirit of infirmity influencing you to overeat. The spirit of infirmity makes you lazy. That way you will operate on low vibrations. If you are operating on low vibrations, you are not alert. Addiction stems from the spirit of infirmity. Drugs, prescription pills, medicine is the spirit of infirmities manifesting itself in the physical realm. Mental illness is the spirit of infirmity. GMO, addiction, obesity, medication, and all sorts of diseases come from the spirit of infirmity, manifesting itself through individuals bound by that spirit. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she arose and ministered unto them. Now when the sun was setting, all they that had any sick with divers diseases brought them unto him. And he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And devils also came out of many, crying out and saying, Thou art Christ, the Son of God. And he, rebuking them, suffered them not to speak, for they knew that he was Christ. Your doctors will say it is arthritis, cancer, HIV, the flu, and a migraine. All of these bodily injuries stems from the spirit of infirmity, and you do not have to tolerate these devils plaguing your body. You do not need surgery and prescription pills to get rid of the illness. If you want a temporary fix, then take the prescription drugs and have surgery. The illness will return. If you want a permanent fix, get to the root, and the root is spiritual. The kingdom of darkness want you to treat your bodily illnesses with worldly treatments. Israelites, how did the Most High say a spirit would flee from you? Submit yourself to Yah, resist the devil, and he would flee from you. Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Israelites, all manner of sicknesses are spirits. You do not have to tolerate the illnesses plaguing your body. Do not allow any spirits to torment you for multiple years. The scriptures reveal to us of a man who was plagued with an infirmity for 38 years. When Yahshua saw him, he asked him if he wanted to be healed. The man went on to explain to Yahshua why he could not be healed. Yahshua told him to pick up his mat and go. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 38 years. 
When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. The man's faith healed him. He did not need to see a doctor and take prescription pills to treat the illness. Yahshua asked him if he wanted to be healed. The man followed Yahshua's instructions and he was healed. You have to believe, Israelites, that the Most High can heal you. If your faith is not strong enough, say to the Most High, just as the man who was asking Yahshua to heal his child, I do believe, but help my unbelief. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it to go since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. The woman with the issue of blood, her faith healed her from the spirit of infirmity. When you attack any spirit, if you believe you are delivered and no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, you will be delivered. And you shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Israelites, you have to set boundaries and control your health. If you eat all manners of food, then your body will be cursed with all kinds of diseases. The food you eat opens the door to the spirit of infirmity to oppress your life. It should not be a surprise to you that the spirit of infirmity disguises itself through food in the spirit realm. The religion called Christianity told the people you can eat whatever you want. If you take the time to see our people's health condition, you will see how the spirit of infirmity is destroying their life. The heathens helped the spirit of infirmity by creating GMOs and putting the low quality food in the grocery stores in your neighborhoods. Israelites, there was a reason the Most High informed you of evil altars in the heathens' establishments. Most heathens' restaurants have altars dedicated to their idols. The Most High said not to eat food sacrificed to idols. The he abstain from meats offered to idols and from blood and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which, if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. Consuming the cursed food forge a covenant with the heathen's idol. In addition, it opens the door to other spirits to oppress you. Remember, most dreams related to food is witchcraft. An evil altar is where a worker of iniquity sends spirits to oppress their victims. The heathens have evil altars in their establishments. Israelites, I hope you made the connection with evil altars in restaurants and the spirit of infirmity disguising itself with food in the realm of the spirit. Soul food may look good and taste good. However, soul food is destroying you. Infirmity is not an emotion or a flesh injury that cannot be cured. Saying that there are no cure for the diseases plaguing humanity is a lie from the kingdom of darkness. The workers of iniquity want you to believe there is no cure. That way they can keep you in bondage and rob you by making you buy expensive prescription medicine. If you open your eyes, Israelites, you will begin to see the root to all your troubles. Do not let the kingdom of darkness shape your perception. The kingdom of darkness want you to treat bodily illnesses with the carnal mind. That way the spirit of infirmity remain undetected. If you can look past the people that hate you, you will begin to see the unclean spirits controlling these people. One by one, you will begin to identify your oppressors. Once you locate the target, 
send the fire of the Most High against your enemy to destroy them. You have to open your eyes, Israelites. Do not let what's in front of you determine your future. The Most High can and will deliver those who walk uprightly. There is absolutely nothing too hard for the Most High. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. <laughs> 